This year's iPhone 15, despite all the hate it gets, is probably the best iPhone based model released since the iPhone 12. And here's why. The iPhone 14 was possibly the smallest upgrade to the iPhone based model in years and I used to actively recommend the iPhone 13 over the iPhone 14 and I still do. That's because the iPhone 14 only bought a new selfie camera with autofocus, action mode, a new flash module which didn't really make that much of a difference and cinematic mode 4K 30fps and that's about it. But I can't say the same about the base model iPhone 15 this year. This year's iPhone base model is the closest it has ever been to last year's Pro model. The iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 15 have so much in common. The display is almost the same, with featuring the same 1000 nits of typical brightness and 2000 nits of peak brightness and also featuring the new, new thinner bezels which we've seen last year on the 14 Pro although they're not as thin as the ones on iPhone 15 Pro. It also finally gets rid of the notch, replacing it with the dynamic island which we saw last year on the iPhone 14 Pro. And it comes with the A16 Bionic chip which is not a bad chip by any means. It also features the last year's 48 megapixel camera from the iPhone 14 Pro. That means we also get a 2x telephoto op uh, digital, digital crop which does make up for the lack of the 3x telephoto sensor. And that's one of the only complaints I've had in previous place models which has now been fixed. There's also a new 24 megapixel mode for the iPhone 15 which was not present last year in the iPhone 14 Pro. You're also getting a matte back glass this year on the base model, making the size the only external difference on the Pro model. You're also getting Smart HDR5 on the new iPhone 15 compared to Smart HDR4 on previous models and you're now finally getting USB-C. Granted, that can be a great or terrible thing depending on who you are. Uh, if you have a lot of lightning cables and don't really have any USB-C device, then it probably doesn't mean anything to you and probably means the worst. But if you're someone like me who has a MacBook Air and an iPad Air, both which charge by the USB-C, it means that now your phone, MacBook and iPad and all your devices can be charged with USB-C. So you don't have to carry two separate cables, one for your phone and one for everything else. The iPhone 15 also has a new U2 chip, although that's not what they call it, they just call it the second generation ultra wideband chip for some reason. Anyways, that unlocks the feature that you can um, use to precision find your friend's iPhone or your any other iPhone in Find My. Um, so yeah, that's what's unlocked by U2 right now, but uh, it'll probably actually end up unlocking more features in the future than it does right now today um, as of release. The iPhone 15 also features a minor design change this year. The edges don't dig into your hands and are less sharp and are more curved this year. That is a minor dis uh, design difference um, and will make the phone feel nice in your hands. The only thing that's really stopping the iPhone 15 is the lack of a 120Hz display. And that also happens to be the only difference between the iPhone 14 Pro and iPhone 15 display. And while I do very much agree that Apple should have put a higher refresh rate display on the iPhone 15, I don't think the lack of it makes the iPhone 15 experience any worse. Because quite frankly, refresh rates don't make a functional difference. They're just a nice to have. That's one of the reasons I went with an iPad Air and MacBook Air over the highest refresh rate with the MacBook Pro and Mac iPad Pro. That's because I don't think putting that extra money is going to give me a functional difference just because of the refresh rate. Refresh rates are just a nice to have, but they're not going to enable me to do something I can't already do with an iPad Air or MacBook Air with, uh, with uh, like lower refresh rate. It's purely a nice to have, which I still do think Apple should add to next year's model. Basically, all I'm trying to say here is that solely the lack of a 120Hz display doesn't make the iPhone 15 a bad phone or a bad deal. And in fact, considering all the things that they've added this year in the iPhone 15 base model, like I said in the video title, the iPhone 15 is the best base model iPhone Apple has put out in years. Oh, and I forgot to mention the new portrait mode features this year. Uh, as someone who really loves portrait mode, these features are really, really cool. I have even met, I have even made my own series shortcuts to add these features to portrait mode. It basically allows you to take a normal photo and then later convert it to a portrait mode. And I'm so glad it's finally inbuilt onto the iPhone now. 
the iPhone 15, despite all the changes, remains at the $799 price tag just like last year. In fact, in some countries, uh, especially European countries, the price is actually decreased. But despite manufacturing being in India, the Indian pricing remains the same. And in previous years, we have seen that once manufacturing starts in India, the price comes down by 10,000 rupees. I'm hoping that we see that earlier than we have seen that in previous years. Previously, it would take about two to three months or even six months sometimes. Uh, this year, I'm expecting it to be available with 10,000 rupees off right from the beginning, perhaps in a few weeks. Um, that should make the iPhone 15 a very good deal, bringing it on par with the US prices after taxes and uh, carrier unlocking. In conclusion, the gap between the Pro model and base model this year is astonishingly low. And it is a, it is a great phone that I'd recommend to most people, even over the Pro models. The gap between the Pro model and um, and base model has never been so low since the iPhone 12. Back in the iPhone 12 days, the only difference between the iPhone 12 Pro and the 12 was basically a stainless steel frame, an extra telephoto sensor, um, and that's about it. Everything else was essentially the same. You also got a LiDAR sensor, but yeah. This year, you do have a few more differences, uh, like the titanium frame, although it does look very similar to aluminium in terms of the texture. Um, then there's an action, an action button, um, you get a higher refresh rate display, always on display, uh, slightly thinner bezels, um, USB -C, faster USB-C and an A17 Pro. But yeah, that's about it. And, and there are a lot of uh, camera features as well, but very few people can actually take advantages of the camera features on the Pro models. But yeah, uh, for most people, the base model iPhone seems like the way to go this year. Unless you really want a pro naming and the pro price tag, the base model is a really, really, really compelling phone. And the 15 is also a really easy choice over last year's 14 Pro for me personally. The ability to take 24 megapixel photos, um, the new portrait mode and USB-C are functional upgrades to me that make a real difference in day-to-day -day usage. Honestly speaking, the Dynamic Island, USB-C and the slightly tweaked design are things that you would actively notice over the iPhone 14 in day-to-day -day usage. Although that's not particularly an upgrade that I would recommend coming from iPhone 14 to 15. But yeah, see, in 2023, you don't really expect the phones to be reinvented every year and you're not supposed to upgrade every year anyways. Upgrades are meant to stack up over year to year and you should hold on to your phones for a couple of years. And considering the changes that the iPhone 15 has brought to the table this year, I finally decided after five years to upgrade from my iPhone XR to the iPhone 15. I'm gonna be going with the blue model and I'm really excited for it. Although I am slightly pissed that Apple did not include a white or starlight version of the iPhone 15 this year, it's an interesting choice and I really wish they added Starlight. It's this year I launched my Starlight Apps LLP company, uh, but they decided not to add Starlight. Um, interesting choice. Anyways, let me know what you think about the iPhone 15 this year. It's an upgrade I'm really excited for, finally changing my phone after four years. Um, and yeah, I'm really sorry I wasn't able to make a video this year uh, covering the Apple event. On the Apple event day, I wasn't keeping well. Um, I, even had to miss, I even had to miss school and take some rest. So yeah, that's about why I didn't post on Apple event day. Anyways, let me know your thoughts, like I said, in the comment section down below about iPhone 15 and what you think about the pricing. I'll see you next time with a lot more iPhone 15 coverage and review once I get my hands on, my, on the phone. Thank you for watching, see you later.